And we are live. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome, everybody, to the channel. Hi. We're going to be talking about medical supplies. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Okay. Thanks for coming through. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the Thrive Thursday Live. This is our host. Our host is Stardust too. You may know her for her gardening. Also, she does a daily live workout at 9 a.m. And she is an advocate for preparedness. Our co-host with us tonight is Carmen Q. She is a retired CO mm -hmm. and also an advocate for preparedness. She does a preparedness topic lives on Saturday afternoon and other things on her channel. And I am Bougie Prepper, Bougie Prepper, an advocate for preparedness. And on my channel, I do two-way Tuesday, cast iron Wednesday, fried up Friday, and other things. Thanks for joining us tonight. As uh, Star said, we are talking about medical organization and necessary, well, our first talk, uh, talk will be having meds organized and necessary documents. Yes. Hi, my Renaissance grandma. How are you? Uncle Al, how you doing? Hey. Okay. So, um, where do you want to uh, the first thing is having meds organized and necessary documents. Uh, this is for, hold on a second. This is for educational and entertainment purposes. Only please get advice, get advice and training from, seek advice and a training from a professional. Yeah. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Happy Mac. Hello, hello, hi everybody. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. <laughs> so, so in preparedness, it's really important to have some type of medical training and medical equipment. Hi, Shortcake, how you doing? You want to give it a few minutes for people to come in? Okay. Yeah, because right. we be having lives that take us like 10 minutes for everybody to say hello to everybody. <laughs> hi, Audrey. G Mama. Hello. Hi. Hi, sure, Kate. Hi, Mac. Yep. Hi, Renaissance Grandma. Yeah, let's get everybody time to get in. Make sure you guys get your pen and your papers together so you can take notes tonight because we will be doing note taking for this live again. Thank you for hitting the like button on your way in. We appreciate it. Yep, yep. Thank you. Like and please share this video so that we can get the word out because a lot of people don't think that us women are preppers too. And we're out here doing this thing, so it's important. We want to make sure everybody thrives in case of any sort of emergency. Yeah. Yes, any and everybody. Especially our children. Mm -hmm. So if we're doing all this prepping, it's for a reason because we might not always be here and we're trying to make a way for the future. So it's very important to get this information and knowledge and incorporate the children into this training as well. All right, five minutes in, we could get it Greetings, going. Tia. Hi, Tia. How are you? G Mama, much love, everybody. Drum gold. Oh, that's Tia. Hi, Tia. Mm -hmm. All right, our first talk will be having meds organized and necessary documents. Yeah. Basically prepared for your bug out bags and also back up here at home. Hi, Robin, how are you? <laughs> CQ, you have anything to say on that? Oh, on your meds. And um, so for preparedness, you want to have medications that you take or anyone in your family takes personally that is prescription wise. You may want to talk to your doctors to see if you can get an extra month ahead of time. Some medication is very expensive, so it might be difficult. But if you have a 
conversation with your doctor and let them know that you are trying to prepare in case anything happens or maybe that you're going away on um, vacation and you may need some extras just to start stacking up those type of medications that you may need that you can't run out to the store and get. You want to have those at least, at least however you take it twice a day, three times a day, you want to have at least three months. So it's going to be, it's going to take some time to build that up unless you can get it. And if you want to come out of pocket and pay for it, it's entirely up to you, but you're going to need those medications in case the pharmacies get shut down or they're vandalized in a shift hit, um, situation. You want to be able to have the medications that you need every day, all the time. That's for you, your family, whoever, however big your family is. Then you're also going to need to stock up on everyday medications, cold medicines. You're going to need that if it's seasonal. Um, you want to have those on deck. You want to also have pain medications. You also want to have um, allergy medications. Those are things that you want to keep with you at all times. You can go to the 99 cent stores and stock up on those things if you want to. Um, usually medication that has an expiry date, but it usually lasts longer. It just means that the strength is just a little bit less than what it initially is that's um, printed on the box. Hi, my fellow family, how you doing? So those are things that you wanna have with you in case. You also wanna have things like, um, what was it? Uh, like your neosporins. You know, neosporin, you neosporin, diarrhea medication. Yeah. You, you're gonna be, right, um, you're gonna you be eating. You want children's Tylenol. You, know, right. um, you, 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 you want, if you can, to even have like, um, a little bit of powdered milk in a bag. Remember how we used to have to have that in school? Like the tooth came out or something. You know, something as simple as having powdered milk in a bag. Have that with you too. Um, uh, if you're more on the natural, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're fine, sweetie. Electrolyte. Make sure you have like electrolyte. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're more on the natural side, you want to have those teas and herbs available to you to make those types of medications. If you went to, you want to have something for nausea. In case you are bugging out and you're eating um, berries or mushrooms or whatever it is out there in the forest, you want it might not agree with you right away because it's not something that you normally eat. So you want to have anything, Pepto-Bismol, definitely something you want to have in there. Anything? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I'm done. Go ahead. I was going to say even something as simple as like within your home, urinary tract treatments. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. And they sell those things at Walmart. So don't think that it's a whole lot of money. You can go and you can get. Um, mm -hmm. I bought one. I think they're less than $10. I have a box in here. I think it's yeah. less than $10. Probably like 5 or $6 for a box. Right. For the ladies, all of those medications that you may need for the lady parts, you want to just have those on deck as well. Yeah. Back up. And, and you can also, some people are making their own sanitary napkins now. Well, you yeah. could buy the washable ones. You could be the reusable. Yeah. You could yeah. buy the reusable ones. They have reusable ones and they have that. What's the cup called? The cup. <laughs> 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 so you also want to get ointments like hydrocortisone, triple bionic mm -hmm. ointment. Mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. And a lot <laughs> in your um prepping items you said that you're gone. um you're if you your yeah mm -hmm. um you're if you um sorry honey go ahead you? um y'all said pain meds right if you mm -hmm. um concerned about fallout you could get um the soap because um new york had a with a psa about fallout so if somebody if you're in fallout and they come inside and you need to wash they have soap for that that you could wash up um something called wound wash is a is by i did well simply saline wound wash um yes and i'm going to get some exam gloves um for those that may um i seen some oxygen canisters i thought that was a good idea mm -hmm. and um yes. red garbage bags um, yes, for I blood. think that is good in case you you clean in a wound and and you know you have the bloody gauze and stuff. Have a red garbage bag to 
put those um, things in to separate it from so in case nobody don't go in the garbage and mess around with with those type of things like that. Um, the tourniquet we had talked about too to get everybody should have a tourniquet. You should have at least two tourniquets with you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, my dog is going crazy. You want the red bag as your hazmat bag? Yeah. You hazmat bag. There you go. If you can get the blue, the blue or white nitrate um, gloves, those are great. Mm -hmm. Examining, examination, doing an examination of a person mm -hmm. just to see if they have any bleeding. It'll show up more in yeah. the glove versus the black gloves. But it's easy to get out there. Um, I bought a box of 100 and I just took two each at a time and rolled them up and put them so when you open this and you grab one you'll actually have two two gloves right so gloves can, are, i'm mm -hmm. sorry mm -hmm. so gloves and masks are very good items to have because they're bartering items not only that if you're working on somebody just say um they fell and they're spewing out blood or coughing up blood and you have to perform um cpr in them or work with work in a close pr proximity with them you don't you want to put that mask over them so that you're not contaminated and you also want to have your mask on as well when you're dealing with a patient or someone who's injured so you also you know you want to do protective measures on yourself no black gloves at all absolutely on my five family you could, um, tell them about the color of the gloves yeah i just did you don't you want to stay away from black or dark colored gloves you want to use the nitrate blue like bougie just showed you or the white gloves so if you you know, check somebody like that, or from the back, you can see where the blood is coming from or if they're bleeding. So that's something you want to do. Um, you want to have a CPR mask, okay? Because I think now you can only perform the CPR breathing on children. Check your area for that. Do your due diligence in, in regards to that. If you don't have a CPR mask, again, the glove comes into effect. You would just open the part of the glove that you slide your hand in, cut the middle finger off, put that into the mouth, and you just made yourself a CPR mask if you don't have one available as yet. Happy Happy Mike said, New York with the nuclear PSA, Canada with at least have three days of food supplies, making me glad we're ahead of the game as preppers. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, that's just three days. We're trying to push for like three months, six months over here. Right. Um, there's apps. Mama, mm -hmm, sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. So there's apps on your phone, first aid apps, if you're not um, sure what to do, that they can walk you through it. But if you can get to the Red Cross, if you can get to a CERT, if you can get to any type of training that you can learn hands on what to do. Hi, Black. Hey, Dexter, how are you? That you can do. That's something that you absolutely want to put under um, your skill sets. If you have any type of medical training, you become an asset in any mag or anybody else that you come come in contact with if you don't have one. It makes you a valuable asset to anything because you have a skill that is going to be needed by just about anybody. Hey, yeah. Diabetic Prepper. Yes, welcome in, Diabetic Prepper, Black Point, Dexter. Yeah. Uh, now the, the next topic was um y'all doing thank you for joining us tonight the next topic we said first aid and i guess we already kind of got in that first aid and medical supplies um the supplies yeah supply again supply when you get your supplies you want to have a thermometer there's electrical ones you the less that you have to contact with somebody the better especially if it's a stranger. And again, this is not just for shift situations. This is for everyday situations mm -hmm. like an accident. Um, you're out at the park and somebody gets injured playing something. It could be anything. So having a medical kit and some gauze, ace bandages, um, a pair of scissors in case you have to cut through some yes, clothes so you want to get. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, sutures. Right, you want to have stu sutures. You want to have. There's a staple gun. Um, staple gun. I'm kind of reserving that for anything to do with a head trauma because it's hard to stick anything on there, put tape on there. So 
a stu um, the stitch you gun, it's kind of easier for you just to staple it close and move forward. So you want to have um, what's it called? Uh, let's say the dirt pot. Right. You want to have to. This can be used for so many different things. So this is a very very. It's relatively cheap. You won't believe which is the amount of things that you can use this for. And it is quick, it's fast. It's also good that you can write things down. If you put on a tourniquet, you want to make sure that you write the time that you put that down. So if they do um, end up going to get some medical treatment, the next person assessing them can know how long it can stay on. I do believe a tourniquet no more than six hours. So you want to have that information. You don't want the person to lose a limb. So you want to make sure that you have some masking tape and a Sharpie marker, which writes on just about anything and won't wash off. You want to make sure you have a couple of Sharpies inside your medical bag. And also get you the uh, first aid kit cards. Even if you don't have the time to go take a first aid class, which we recommend you do, go see professional <laughs> training and take a first aid class um, and CPR training as well. At least get the cards. You, you can get those off of Amazon. You can get those off of the CERT website. You can get those from American Red Cross. But it makes more sense to take the classes and do the practice and the training and do it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Take your children. Make it a family day. Make it fun. You know what I mean? Don't just make it about, oh, we're going to do this mundane, try to save somebody. You know? <laughs> the more it fun. Right. The more training you get, the more training your whole family gets, the more confident you are. One of the basic things you want to do when you get into a, um, a crisis situation is you want to remain calm. You will, you will remain calm if you are confident in your skills yeah. and not be like majority of other people. When they see something, they start screaming and it's carrying on. You start assessing the situation and then you know what to do. You have a plan of action. So the more training that you get, and some of these trainings, like the first aid classes, a lot of them you can get for free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I look for a CERT, S-C-E-R-T mm -hmm. in your area. They give free um, CPR and um, first aid training. Yeah, just go they even teach you, well, I don't know what they taught me how to put out a fire. It's the fire mm -hmm. department that um, sponsors mm -hmm. out here. So. We even had training on how to put out a fire with the with a fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. With well, the first aid class, it's also going to teach you how to address a burn, how mm -hmm. to um, secure someone who might have like a, a sprained ankle. Those are things you want to learn. A broken arm, you'll learn how to mm -hmm. use a sweater a and some of your uh, a splint, a sweater. Um, some of your cordage just to keep it stable. You can use a lot of things inside your bag. You don't have to buy a lot of things. Once you know the skill set, you can just kind of improvise as you go along because after a while it does pop, it does end up to be a lot of things. And again, your bug out bag, you want that to be as light as possible. Minimal. Yeah. Right. So if you can get like, this can be used as moleskin. Moleskin is light, but if you have one roll of tape, it does so many things in, um, learn to work with nature. You need something to stabilize a broken leg. You can use, you know, two pieces of stick, some of this, your bandanas, wrap it tight and keep it stable. Um, broken arm, you could take your sweater, the person's sweater, put it over the arm to stabilize it, get some cordage and keep it stable to the body. So there's a lot you of things. You can do a lot with pantyhose, Carmen. I want to bring that up too. You can use pantyhose as a tourniquet. You can, you know what I mean? It's a lot of things you can do with pantyhose. Yeah. Panty, when it's like stretchy elastic when it comes to a tourniquet, just me personally from taking the class, um, I took an online class and you kind of want to stay with, stay away from the stretchy thing because it gives. You want to use something mm -hmm. more solid and stable for it. Um, well, Black yeah. is in here. If you want to have him hop on, he can tell you all about tourniquets. Who's here? Black Point Dexter. Oh. oh. Black yeah. Point Dexter, would you like to come up and talk about tourniquets? Mm-hmm. Because we're down for it. Thank and you so much. The, the next thing, it would be good because the next I thing is family good. training and practice. So yeah. if you could pop up when he's ready. Mm -hmm. We um, could move on to have emergency supplies on hand in multiple locations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, so Paul you want to have more than one bag in your house? 
you want to have more than one emergency kit bag in your house. Yeah. So this is in your car too. Okay. Right. Sure. Okay. So this is this goes in my everyday carry. It's a little bit of everything. And right there, that gray one, that is my everything medical that I have inside there. If something was to happen, I have to go. I just grab everything instead of going into my cupboards and trying to slide it into a bag. I throw it on my back along with my other one, or I can carry it on the like on a top handle grip in my car, and then we're out. Hey, growing with Hudson. <laughs> um, I was looking at some bags earlier, mm -hmm. and that was one of my concerns because. Yep. These bags come in different sizes with different um, beneficial instruments, right? And different pockets and things that you can add here and there. But if you already have a heavy bug out bag, mm -hmm. are you going to be able to carry? Because it's like another book bag. Mm -hmm. It's another book bag. So you have to consider that when you're packing your bug out bag. And right. if you're going to have, mm -hmm. you know, a medical bag like that, like where would be the best place to keep that medical bag? Because you're gonna have well, that this I plan to bug in, so this is just my everything in one. Like, what if I have to just isolate in a room upstairs or here? I could just grab that bag, throw everything inside there, knowing that everything is there that I need, right? Being medical wise, um, bugging out if you're getting in your car and you just have to get to your next location, you can grab your bug out bag and this. Bug out bag goes on your back. You can grab that by the handle, throw it in your car, and keep it going. Again, if I lose that bag or if I can't take it, I still have this inside my everyday bag and my bug out bag. I still have a smaller kit. But because I plan to bug in, I have everything inside that bag. I don't keep it in my in my cupboards or anything like in a medicine cabinet or anything like that. You want yeah. to have, you have, have your your first aid too. kit out, not in a drawer or up in the closet. <laughs> I have mine hanging on um, the rack by mm -hmm. the kitchen. And you want to have one for your vehicle too, right? Mm -hmm. You should have a metal kit. For, um, you also want to have alcohol peroxide. You want to have yes. um, it's hand have sanitizers. Burn tech, if you can. You know what I mean. It's a burn dressing. Mm -hmm. Um, if you can get a pole box or a stethoscope, um, mm -hmm. a Oops, sorry, that was my dog. Sorry, <laughs> okay. Black point Dexter's here, but if you can get those things in your medical kit, you want to have those as well. Yeah, you was kind of low. I was wondering, you could beg. Um, Blankets, tweezers. Welcome, Black Point Dexter. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Sorry. Yeah. I thought it was nine central, but didn't read closely. So, how's everybody doing tonight? Sorry, did you see my uh, message? The one you just put in, or um, yes, um, star, you seen it? Yeah. I okay. On it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna go into the IFAC real quick. Uh, I know heard somebody talk about tourniquets. Uh, okay. Carbon went over a lot of the good things. Um, Getting information first and foremost because it doesn't do any good to have the equipment. We don't right. know how to use it. So she talked about um, some resources. There's one thing: uh, local stores they sell like these first aid kits, uh, like guides to first aid. This mm -hmm. costs about eight dollars, and it has a pretty good, extensive uh, beginner's guide to first aid, and it has a lot of pictures. So some of us who do better with pictures, pick this up, put this in each one of your bags. I have my go bag. I have my you know everyday carry bag. So I have this information in one of these in each one of those. So if I don't need it, I can hand it off to somebody else. And these are laminated, so they're really good to have. And it has all of, all of your basic first aid. So bandaging, how to put splints on, like Harvin said. So get information. Uh, we have books. Books are always good. You know, this is the ultimate survival guide. It has a lot of good information. A lot of the tools that Carbon mentioned, like suturing and stuff like that, mm -hmm. if you've never done it before, at least the information is there. Mm -hmm. So you can begin to learn some of that. So having access to information, like you all pointed out, there's tons of information online. And I work for a major healthcare facility here in the uh, South Texas uh, area. And so many classes are free. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are 
empty. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see people just get in those classes, get a stop mm -hmm. the bleed class. And that's what the tourniquets are about. You know, every time you go somewhere, you should have this tourniquet on you. I have my IFAC kit. Mm -hmm. It has, you know, that attached to it. This goes with me everywhere. I have mm -hmm. one on my vest. So for me, I have one in my larger bag. Yeah, my actually, have, one. actually have several in my larger bag. Nice. You know, that's my heavy duty bag. Then I also have another one that I keep, you know, keep on me. So I carry this around, you know, for other people to use. So have those and stage them. So mm -hmm. quickly on the tourniquet, I don't want to take up a whole lot of time. Uh, mm -hmm. Staging just means basically getting it ready. You want to have it in some kind of container or a holder because it keeps it protected. It doesn't get damaged, get, you know, dirty and worn. So basically staging means just taking it and having it ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, when you get excited, you know, your adrenaline is pumping, you're going fast, your heart's pumping. So this little thing right here, typically it comes closed off like that. And when you're kind of scared or nervous, mm -hmm. your fine motor skills go away. Mm -hmm. So just take this little thing off right here becomes mm -hmm. a problem. So you want to typically keep that in the place on this side so you don't have to worry about getting this important part out and on your body. So basically, um, it's very simple to use. You know, you have it. Okay. Yes. Now what you're saying. Okay, this, because mine is over if here. Over, yeah, if it's over that holder, holding part, you don't want that because, like, again, those fine motor skills, you want to have okay, it on Okay, so the, you're uh, saying you don't want it over where it's holding to get out this of, of that gap exactly you okay know, you want okay. that window available so you can just get it out of there and get okay. it on your body right okay. so that's one of the biggest points of failure that people have they have it over here and they get oh my gosh I, you can't even get it off okay. every second somebody's bleeding blood's on the ground or wherever else it's not in your body that's problematic so staging okay. it having it ready to go and then practicing it you know a good way for me that i learned how to do it is you see that little red mark right there or mm -hmm. the little tab right there. Uh -huh. I use that as a as a landmark. So if it's gonna go on my right side, I want it pointing inside. If it's on the left side, I want it pointing inside. So if I if somebody comes up to me and they say like left arm, I have to, or I get hit hit on my left arm or there's a left side injury, I want it pointing in. I have that part pointing in towards my body. So that way it's gonna be easier to snap it open, get it on your body, you grab that tab and you're pulling it towards you instead of pulling it away from you. If you're pulling it away from you, it's hard to use. You take it, you put it on, that's half the battle right there. You've done that in less than 10 seconds. You give this a couple twirls and you, it's gonna be uncomfortable and it's gonna hurt. Mm -hmm. Yes, say, it, oh, is. Oh, 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 oh. yes it, it is. Yes, it is. You get, get the time kit. You need to do exactly what he's doing so you can feel how it is. Yeah. And, and you want to practice this every day. You know, practice with yourself. Left arm, go. Boom. Get it on. Boom. Yep. Okay. You're still not finished because if you start moving somebody with this on and it is hurting. So if I start crying, forget. <laughs> get, forget. <laughs> but, uh, so once you have that on there, this part's still open. So you want to make sure that's secure because if you start moving somebody, it can pop off and that's going to be a problem. Now they're bleeding again. Right. So you want to take that part that was that you staged, put it over it, secure it, and then put that part that you wrapped around completely around there, and you're good to go. That's a secure tourniquet. Somebody mentioned earlier the time. There's a little time tab there. Write that time, mm -hmm. and you never take a tourniquet off. Back in the old days, I'm, what, 62 years old. Back in the old days, they said take it off every so often. Basically, you were bleeding people slowly to death. You're also re releasing toxins that are... It back into the system, which can be problematic. So once you put it on there, you leave it on there. You have time to get them to a secondary facility and get help. So you want to put it on there and then monitor it. That's the other thing too. Once it's on there, monitor it. If you're moving somebody or if they're, you know, squirming, make sure that's on there because you don't want to lose somebody once you put that tourniquet on there because it came loose. So this is something that's easy to use. It's relatively inexpensive. Um, you want to use, buy them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> major manufacturers mm -hmm. uh, because some of the older ones or some of them that come from like China, Amazon even got caught up in there mm -hmm. to where they were um, using inferior parts. So imagine going to put this on somebody and it breaks. This windlass, this part right here breaks or this little 
nylon brakes. So you had the potential to save somebody's life. And because you, you know, tried to save $5. Yeah. So, yeah. You don't want a cheap tourniquet. Exactly. Not at all. Yeah, never go cheap. Uh, one thing that we were taught. Yeah. One other thing real quick that we were taught before there was kind of knowledge that was out there was that for pediatrics that you couldn't use these Cat5 type tourniquets, Cat5, Cat7 type tourniquets. Um, TCCC, there's a, education, a facility, medical facility out there, uh, North Florida Tactical, uh, Carbon, you had mentioned that before. They're based on, they use uh, fact-based medicine, evidence-based medicine, and they've shown that you can use these on four to 14 year olds. So down to four years old, you can still use these, these type of tourniquets and still be effective. So you don't have to have the old rat style, the real small thin ones. This can still save a pediatric person's life, mm -hmm. uh, a patient's life. So having this saves the majority and can go a very long way in helping a person from not becoming a casualty. So I, I recommend that everybody get one Take a stop the bleed course. A lot of times, again, those are free. They're easy. Within 30 minutes, you can become extremely proficient in putting this on, mm -hmm. getting it on a person within 30 seconds. And that's that's like the standard. If you can do it within 30 seconds, you're actually doing better than Navy SEALs because they have a one-minute standard. So I, tell, I owe people to a 30-second standard because then you're twice as good as a Navy SEAL. And everybody can do that. Anybody can do that. So I recommend everybody get that. If you're in a lot of these medical kits, take them out, practice on yourself, practice on your friend. Like if I if carbon have one now, right arm go. Yeah. Get it on in 30 seconds. Left okay, arm, wait, go. right arm go? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now we have it. You said have this pointing in the inside of my right arm, right? Yeah. yeah. And then usually what I do, I grab it and I shake it, shake it out so that gives it open and I put it yeah. over my arm. Let me restage mine and we'll do it together. We'll do it together. I have to, once you use those, you want to stretch them out once you use them because they have uh, material in there that helps keep it, uh, helps bind it. So once you use them, you want to stretch them out and then refold them. So I'll go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. um, but typically um, they're easy to use, easy to practice. And the more you practice, the better you get. Um, I've never had to use my firearm. I'm into firearms. I've never had to use my firearms in all of my life. Mm -hmm. I've had to use my medical training countless times. I'm a registered respiratory therapist. I was an LVN. I was the EMT in the Air Force. And I can't count how many times I went across somebody and had to give first aid. Mm -hmm. Had to give, you know, some type of uh, medical care. So um, it's something that everybody should have, especially if you have kids and family, people you care about, have mm -hmm. that available. Mm -hmm. So here's here it is staged. Can you, wait, BP, can you put him on the on the big screen, so I guess it's easier for everybody to see. It's so small. Well, we're supposed to be doing it together. Well, you can take me off so they can be side by side. Side by side, the two of us. Mm -hmm. I think it's easier for you to see it if it's a little bit bigger. <laughs> David is like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> so here it's it is a, staged. Turn, it's a tourniquet, David. So here it is staged. Mm -hmm. There's my little tap end right there. I have my windlass, this little stick, it's called a windlass. Mm -hmm. um, and like Carbon said, you can improvise these things. You can get one of the things like my head wraps, my head scarves, mm -hmm. that makes, you know, you can actually Put do that it for side a by side, um, star. Uh, you can use a t-shirt, anything, and use a stick. Uh, mm -hmm. When we improvised out in the field, I used, I had to use, I think a handkerchief and a knife for the windlass. So I basically put it around my leg, and put this, tied a, a knot around this, both ends, and then twisted it. And that's mm -hmm. an improvised tourniquet. So practice using stuff around your house, too. Imagine mm -hmm. if you, somebody had an injury and you had to improvise something just to use the blood. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Typically, I'll grab it like this, want that little loop, mm -hmm. and I'll go ahead and shake it out. So if we go right arm, go, I want to make sure that this tap, I'm looking at it, it's pointing in towards my body. So I'm going to grab it, shake it, that gets it open, right? Mm -hmm. so I can take it with my arm in that loop. The arm in the loop. Mm -hmm. Once you shake it out, put that arm in the loop. Mm -hmm. Grab that tab that's pointing inwards because you want to pull it towards you. It's easier to pull it towards you than away. Just take it and just cinch down on that as hard as you can. Just pull it, pull it, and wrap it around. 
Pull it tight. Pull it tight. Pull it tight. Tight, tight, tight. Toward, pull it inside towards your body. Towards, and then wrap it around. And so that's the first part. Once it's like that, you can take your stick, and you don't. You're not going to see. Okay, don't wrap it all the way. Just leave it right there. Leave it right there. Wait, my, um, it should be up top, right? Not yet. You're going to get that stick and start twisting it now. The stick, that other part is going to hang down for right now because you're not going to wrap it all the way around. Okay. Now get that stick and you can move it toward. Right. I put it inside my arm. Ooh, I put it yeah. was hitting there, and you're going to ooh, twist it maybe once, it may be twice, but you're going to feel that pressure. Ooh. Yeah, you're going to feel it. Then it may cinch up, but you want to get it and then put it in that little hook. Once it's in that hook, you're going to feel the pressure on there. It's going to be tight. And then you take that Velcro and then you go ahead and just put it over that and wrap it around. So that's going to secure it. Actually, I missed a step. What did I miss? Anybody know what I missed? This tab. Oh, the, the gray tab, right? The gray tab. See? The gray tab. So you want to secure that first. Write your time on there. And then go ahead and take that little extra piece of Velcro and just kind of wrap it around there. You may have extra hanging down, but as long as that's that Velcro on top of there, you're good. You're good to go. And it should be. Woo. It should hurt. Uh. It should be uncomfortable. <laughs> go ahead and take it off. But I'm going to get bruised. And if you practice, it will bruise. A lot of times I'll have bruises on my arm, so people think I'm getting beat up. But I'll, I'll take that pain. But the more you practice, the better you feel. The more you practice, the better you get. So, and you could do this by yourself while you're watching TV, um, while you're, you know, just sitting around the house. You know, pick it up, left leg, and you could do this. It's the same thing for your le your leg. It's just the, for your leg, for the leg. I basically take that tap and I slide it under my leg and just do do the same way. So the tap's still going to point to the inside. So if I was going to go with my left leg, I take it, slide it under my leg, secure it, cinch it down. Pull it tight, and, and it always goes above the level of the bleed. Of course, you always you don't want to go below the bleed, above the level of the bleed, mm -hmm. and and make sure that you know you have good blood. Okay, uh, now could we set it back up? Let's set it back up. How so do we set it back up? Setting it up. Basically, you want, stretch, you want to stretch it out. Take it both ends to un, undo the loop. So it's straight. You want to do it so it's straight. Undo your loop. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have your windlass, the part that with the little tab. Kind of, I take that and I stretch that out so that little nylon piece is kind of stretched out. And I'll kind of leave that right there for now. But I want you want to take it both ends and just pull it. Kind of like snap it and pull it. So one end of the tourniquet and just kind of stretch it out. Like a belt. And grab it and stretch. Yeah, kind of pop it and stretch it out. So then I usually take the part with the windlass, I put it in my left hand. And I'll take it and I'll put the loop on there and make usually about nine inches, eight to nine inches. I'll take it and I'll fold it over so that tab's like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll put that right there. And then I'll fold that middle section back up into it and fold it over so it makes a nice little neat package. Mm -hmm. And you're back to that again. Black Point Duster, I got a question. Yes, what are you writing on there with? Regular pen, marker, what? You use any kind of marker. Usually they come with a marker, but uh, sure. I think Carbon mentioned like a Sharpie. That's sure. always good to have. All of my kids, they come back with little miniature Sharpies. Yeah. So it's good to write those on there and have those on there. But any way you can mark it. A lot of times what we do in the field, we'll mark it on the person's forehead. We have a reason, so they'll, they'll you know, have it. But okay. in an emergency, you know, you're not going to worry about somebody, you know, having something on there for you, like tourniquet applied or TQ applied in the time. And you can write that on the body, on the head, on any any part of the body that's there. Mm -hmm. And the last piece is just basically get your windlass, put that on one side, and then again, stage that tab again mm -hmm. so it's easy to grab. So you're not, you know, it's not across, mm -hmm. across the oh, gap. I have another good question. So like yes, if you me. have, if you're knocked out, right, and you have mm -hmm. boots with you, how easy is it for the youth to be able to use that tourniquet? Very easy. It's easier probably because they're not going to complain about pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're not going to. You're not going to. The biggest thing is like if you're putting on someone's leg and there's a heavier person, mm -hmm. it's trying to get it under their leg. So you may have to have some assistance or try to push that, you know, that tourniquet 
under their leg. That's going to be the harder part. That's whenever we train or actually use them, you know, that's the hardest part, getting it under the leg. So it's basically get it out, get it flat, and try to slide that under their leg or under, under and put it around their arm. Mm-hmm. Arms are usually relatively easy. You can control those. Legs are a little bit harder, but just do whatever it takes to get that under there. And once you have it in place, it's relatively easy to get it, get it on. You'll be surprised. Once you practice, it'll just, you'll get down, you know, 30 seconds will be like, man, I could put, could have put two on in that time. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you know, the more you do it, the better you get. Okay. So Gloria Hudson said, can you have the same effect from a tourniquet? That is a tourniquet. That whole thing is a tourniquet. Yeah. This is a, a cat uh, five. A, cat seven cloth, tourniquet. a cloth tourniquet. With yeah, the- you can. As long as you make it so that it's about this width, you right. don't want extremely narrow right. because when you have a narrow, like when you, people use string, that puts increased pressure in a smaller area, and it takes mm-hmm. more pressure to occlude those blood that vasculature, right. and you're going to have crushing injuries and a lot of other uh, negative uh, effects. So mm-hmm. you want something if you're going to do it about that width, maybe a little bit wider, decrease pressure, decrease tissue damage, and like I said, like if you just want to make an improvised one, you can get, you know, uh, a t-shirt. Fold it up, get a cloth, a dishcloth, fold it like this, fold it in pieces. So it's about that wide. Take so it. What's that about a half a, wait, no, about, it's a about half an inch, inch, inch and a half. Inch, inch, inch and a half thick. Yeah. yeah. So no, and do that. No, you could use this and just take it, something like this, and take a cloth, wrap it up around there, and just t- tighten it up and mm-hmm. secure the end. So there's a lot of things. And that's the other thing, too. Like I said, practice with stuff you have around the house because you may not have. Or say multiple people get injured, or they get hit in more than one place, or have multiple injuries. You have to learn how to improvise. You know, we're good at doing that. And nothing, have, nothing stretchy. And nothing that's what I was because okay. that's why I said pantyhose. Like if you were in an emergency situation. In an emergency, yeah, do anything, Only anything in, in emergency. that type of situation. Yeah. Now with the pantyhose, if you're going to use that in an emergency situation, you have to keep reassessing it to make sure it doesn't slide right. down you or anything. Exactly. Once it's stretchy, it can give it. You want to make sure that it's a continuous yeah. pressure, right? Yeah, and, exactly. And, and then that yeah. thickness too. You got to be careful with the pantyhose because they might roll. Yeah. You want to make right. sure, like you said, it doesn't roll up on you, and you got that, you know, one pressure where mm-hmm. it might cause more damage than good. Right. So David yeah. Corey had a question. He was asking, "What is the time for? The time is when the time that you apply the application." Tool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the time you put that on, you're taking a note and said, so anybody that comes on that patient, so if you're evacuating back to the hospital, the first thing they're going to say is, how long has this thing been on? That's what they're going to ask. So, because mm-hmm. that's going to inform them as to what their next steps need to be, how they need to proceed, you know, what type of damage, what type of blood loss may have taken place in that time frame. If it's been effective, then that's, you know, leads them in one direction. If it hasn't been effective, they're still bleeding. They, okay, well, now we know they, you know, we need to do some other steps. So mm-hmm. it just, it just, good practice that's best practice put that that time on there mm-hmm. keep it on there until you get that person to secondary uh, care location and okay. that saves a lot of lives you know mm-hmm. you've seen all these situations nationwide mm-hmm. where if people had acted early mm-hmm. then, you know yeah. they, they could have and even if you don't the thing is north florida tactical has an excellent course that stop the bleed course you learn that mm-hmm. if you don't put that tourniquet on even if they make it to the hospital, if they lose a certain amount of blood volume, they're going to have kidney issues, kidney damage, uh, other major yeah. organs that fail, and yeah. the increased chance of morbidity, mortality, just from volume loss. You want to keep that blood inside the body as long as, as much as that's your primary goal. Keep the body, and even if you don't have a tourniquet, direct pressure goes a long way. Yes. <laughs> most, most of these kits have pressure pads that work really well you keep that pressure on there if you have but if you get tired have somebody else come and do there so go through here in your bag and stage your bag as well a lot of times this is a bag that I recently recently got this a lot of this stuff is in stage so you want to make sure i have a tourniquet in here in the plastic that's not good because now i have to open up the plastic do all these other stuff so it exactly. should be on the outside of your bag it, not on the outside. If it's on the end, you can put it on the outside, but if it's on the inside, it shouldn't be in plastic and it should be staged and ready to go because mm-hmm. you're wasting time. Every second that you're wasting, if a person mm-hmm. has a, say they get hit a femoral, femoral artery, that's going to be problematic. They hit brachial mm-hmm. artery, 
that's going to be problematic. Every second counts when you get to stuff like that. It increases, cancels our survival by having that in there. Um, these pads right here, this is emergency dressing pad. This is extremely thick, extremely absorbent. It's putting that over a wound and applying direct pressure mm -hmm. a long way. Even if it's just your hands or a t-shirt, I know we don't like, you know, think about that, but another thing is having gloves, you know, having in your kit. This is my tool that has like my, my sutures and my uh, tweezers and all the other stuff also has gloves. So that's part of your self-care. You know, make sure you have gloves on you at all times. Every one of my kits and one of your kits should have gloves in them. It should have, you know, those essential things that you need and keep them on you at all times because it does you no good if you don't have it on you. If you're in your car, you don't have one. If it's in your everyday carry bag, you don't have one. If you're in your home and you don't have one. And I love how I think several people also said, teach your friends and family yeah. all of this. Because if I go down, what happens if somebody, and I'm in the house by myself with my son, and he doesn't know how to do any of this and I get injured. Mm -hmm. It does no good if you know you don't have somebody else around you, have a buddy to have your back, somebody to have your back. That's one of the biggest things. You know, when you're entering any kind of situation like that is you have to make sure you're safe first of all. So any situation you want to assess, make sure it's safe because you don't want to become a casualty as well, but also that other people around you are, are trained and able to render aid in case you do get injured or hurt. So um, this is really, really good. And it's just so much we can do just by some simple, simple things, taking those courses, stop the bleed as paramount. I think that's one of the best ones. Um, your chest seal comes in in my kit that I have. Yes, and you can improvise those chest seals. I have several chest seals mm -hmm. in here in all my bags and my, my this is like my personal eye pack that goes on my vest, that, you know, if I wear that. But you can also you um, take this plastic from here mm -hmm. and my back, cut it up and put seal three sides. That's a chest seal. And in all my bags, I have multiple. Every time I get a piece of plastic or something like that, Guess what I do? I put it in one of my bags. Mm -hmm. Then I have my duct tape in all of my bags. You can make multiple chest seals for like a mass casualty type situation. Just by using that plastic cigarette wrappers, you just think of things that can provide some kind of a seal for that. Mm -hmm. um, chest, the reason, one of the things on chest seals though, you have time, say there's a penetrating chest injury. Typically you have 15 minutes before people exhibit any type of symptoms from a, uh, a tension in the thorax where air is getting in and causing shifting of the bones and some of the our other structures inside the chest. Bleeds, and again, when you go through these courses, you learn how to triage or see, see what's the important thing. Okay, yeah, they may have a sucking chest wound, but they have time. But if you miss a femoral bleed or you miss something else major like that, that's going to kill them faster. So you have to assess, look, treat the important things first, and then go onto those secondary things. And not a lot of those courses online and information that's available, it teaches you that. And you have to get in that mindset. Okay, what's what's important? What can I treat right now? What's the important thing that's gonna cause this person to not make it or make it? And get into that mindset so that you can make do the most good for the most people, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's it's just that part that's part of prepping when we're, you know, doing stuff. All the other stuff is good too, but if you there's a saying that North Florida Tackle teaches and a lot of people say, there's no mission without medical. If you don't have, and no, nothing takes place without medical. If you have all this other stuff and you neglect your medical, everything else is secondary. You get a cut on your finger, it gets infected. Now you got this, this, that, and the other. You get an abrasion on your eye and that gets infected. Now you, that's this and the other. Carbon always talks about dental care kits. You get a, a tooth that ends up, you're, you're done, so. The medical is one of the things I always push. It's always to the forefront for me since I've worked medical for so long. And I've seen that, you know, just a little bit of training goes a long way. And we're all able to do that. You know, you know, your moms and fathers, grandfathers, you know, they had a lot of this information and knowledge. They knew keep which hazel around, keep this, that, and the other, has multiple users for this, that, and the other. You know, keep this, you know, know that honey can be used to help, you know, heal wounds and stuff like that. So they had things that they knew they weren't all this prepackaged, nice this stuff, but they could take a couple sticks and do, you know, mm -hmm. do some magic with them. So uh, just getting back to that common knowledge that and sharing that information with each other. And I learn from everybody too. It's a lot of stuff that, you know, I don't know. And 
always uh, glad to learn from. So I know I talk a lot. I'm sorry. I get, I can, no, uh, no, this okay. is great. Thank you. We appreciate you coming up and doing the demo for us. Yeah, but I appreciate you guys too. Absolutely. Thanks so much. No problem. And we'll be more than happy to have you back. Most <laughs> Most definitely. Just let me know. I gotta remember. Everybody's not uh, Central Standard Time. I was looking at nine. So. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. Anybody Maybe. have any questions for him while you're here? While we've got him on the panel, like if you got anything you would like to know in the chat, please drop your questions. I wash. I when he mentioned about the eyes, eye drops. I wash. You get those Op things over the counter. Ophthalmic. Ophthalmic. Uh, anti. The ophthalmic um, geez. ointment. Ointment. Mm -hmm. That's double duty. If you can have the opportunity, get your doctor to get the ophthalmic ointment. That can be used on skin wounds as well as your eyes. So dust in your eye can cause mm -hmm. a corneal abrasion. Now, how do we spell that? Ophthalmic. O p. is o p. T h a l. Garbage not even trying. I believe they sell it over the counter too. Yeah. So if it's good for your eye, you can also use it for that's that's for um, prescription only. Yeah, so you can get that and use that for double duty. So there are yeah. some over the counter. Yeah, they, yeah, they do have some. I've seen some over the counter. Okay. And typically, I like something that does two things. If something does two things, that saves you weight and you know money. So. Okay, y'all. So write that down. Ophthalmic. 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 Ointment. After bite. There. T. No, no, no. That's not what I heard. Yeah, I have it here. If you can get some afterbite to have in your kits as well. Mm -hmm. The other thing too, I don't know if you guys talked about airway management, and that's a little bit more advanced. Yeah. But a lot of times, if people come in, they have maxillofacial injuries, yeah. upper upper chest injuries. You want to kind of secure their airway. So the old way was to put one of those bite blocks in. Uh, you can buy these nasopharyngeal airways mm -hmm. from Amazon yeah. and other places. They're relatively easy to put in. Uh, some people may not feel comfortable with that, but you just basically grease them up, uh, and then you basically just professional training. Yeah, mm -hmm. you put those in there, and it secures that upper airway. It allows that person that so if the tongues drop back to the back of the throat, they have, you know, injuries to that area. It kind of secures that airway. Of course, if they have massive injuries where you can't identify those structures, you can't identify nares. You don't want to use that, but these basically um, can be lifesavers as well. So get these, train with these, and they have different sizes. Um, quick way that we're taught to put these in to secure that airway. Measure the distance from the your ear to the tip of your nose, mm -hmm. and that's what size you need to get. And the, the kits, I think, twenty something bucks, and you get like six of them, six different sizes. From I think I got this one from Amazon. And they're made from latex, so hypoallergenic. And these are really good to use and have in your kit as well. Urban, Urban said, right what? We can't spell that. <laughs> <laughs> Short K put it in there, y'all. There we go. Um, I was also thinking, like, I don't know what you think about this, but ammonia inhalants. Yeah, those are good to have if somebody has a incident where they're, they faint it, you know, and you're just trying to determine whether or not they're having a single, just a syncopal episode or fainting type of episode, or if they're actually, you know, uh, totally unconscious, not responsive, just putting those smelling salts, what they used to call them in the old days, it kind of gets them okay. And then you could try to assess them from there, but those are always good to have. And a lot of the kids come with that. Uh, you want to stay away from the old ones that they have the, the glass, mm. because that can be damaged, the old, those old ones. They have newer ones where you can just uh, mm. break the plastic in and go to, but those, all that stuff, it, Especially when you buy one of the larger kits, typically they'll have those type of things in there. But go through them. Go through your kit. Use stuff. Um, I think what earlier this year, I was using uh, my uh, smoothie maker, and for some 
reason I put my finger in the end of the thing when I was unplugging it and ended up cutting off, almost cutting off the tip of my finger. Luckily, I have my kit, direct pressure, put it up, you know, hold it up for whatever, how many minutes, looked at it, determined it did need, su need sutures, but put it on there. The nail was cut, you know, put my little uh, no, you, stuff you on there. You type faster. So. <laughs> It was driving me nuts. <laughs> I know. I just was looking it up too, but you typed it quicker than me. <laughs> yeah, so. Triple threat. Yeah, but hey, we. I mean, just think how many times you've had, you've seen, you've had a little boo, a boo boo kit too is always good to have. A lot of people overlook that. Just having something with band aids and you know uh, four by fours and stuff in it, just for little small cuts, antibiotic. A lot of people have all the other stuff but they don't even have some of that simple stuff. So having yourself a little boo-boo kit that you carry in your purse or your backpack every day goes a lot as well. That small kit that you showed us, about how much did that cost you? Which one, the red one? No. This one? No, that one, that one, but it was the other one. It was more of a beige color. So oh, this, this one? Okay, this one comes from Noir Medical. This one actually that was around... Uh, Two hundred dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's a big kit. This has a lot of good everything in here. Uh, Noir Armory. Uh, he, I went to a course with him. I took the North Florida Tactical course. He's a physician out of New Orleans. Mm. Brother went to Meharry. Uh, excellent brother. So he he makes these medical kits and sells oh, them. Oh, let's find him. Can I would like to post his link in here? Yeah, Noir Armory. N O I R Armory. Um, mm -hmm. He has a website. He does a lot of good things in the community there in Baton Rouge. But these kits, everything in here is quality material. He's a physician. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. stuff like this, like this, this is for uh, blood control. Mm -hmm. They have three or products that people use. It was actually called burns. So you mm -hmm. want to stay away from some of that stuff. Everything in his kit is high quality. So you're getting what you pay for. And he mm -hmm. really has like sales on his stuff as well. He also has tourniquets and smaller kits. So that's mm -hmm. one and I do recommend if you want to you know, look at some of the stuff that we have. But this is like uh, a little put more. Put it in chat. Put yeah. it in the bag, yeah. So instead of buying everything piece by piece, you might as well just get a, get, get a kit. Mm -hmm. and there, in there. And he has a smaller one. So he has one like this size, even though I didn't get this from him. He has one like this size. It's like more of a like a EDC kit. He has the tourniquets that he sells. But uh, get yourself. And if you don't want to buy it all at once, buy it. Buy piecemeal. Get your tourniquet. That's one thing I always yep. tell people. Get your tourniquet. Mm -hmm. Get you some four by fours or pressure bandages. You know, mm -hmm. get start with some of those things that you know, so you can stop those bleeds and take care of that. You know, get you some gloves like HEB, the local store here. So the box of latex gloves, and you want it, not latex, but um, nitro nitro Nitro's gloves. Stay away from latex. Nitrate, right? Nitrite. Yeah, you want to stay away from latex because people have allergies. Get yeah. you a box of those, so they sell them like for two bucks for a 50. So and I always restock and put those in different places. So, you know, start small and just kind of build if you don't want to go out, uh, but uh, start somewhere, you know, start, you know, look at what you have around your house because you probably have stuff that you can use right now that is within your reach and then build from there. So, and then build for yourself and then maybe some other people, you know, I'll share stuff with people. If somebody doesn't have something, they don't have a turn to get, I'll throw them one and go out and buy, you know, buy another one because the more people that are prepared the better we are mm -hmm. as a okay mm -hmm. on, on that note i got another question for you yes ma'am if right now we had to get up and go which one of those kids would you grab i'm probably gonna grab this one because mm -hmm. this can go my, around my waist but uh, the thing is i have this is my chest rig mm -hmm. and on my chest rig when it's fully configured i have this for me mm -hmm. that's me this has medical stuff in there as well it has the gloves, it has the tourniquet, it has the pressure pads, mm -hmm. it has triangular bandages, and triangular bandages go right. a long way. I always tell people those things are dirt cheap mm -hmm. and go a long way. It also has those space blankets. That's the another biggest yeah. thing I tell people to get those. Hypothermia. You come out that are like folded up in a little plastic bag. Exactly, and they cost a buck. And yeah. those save lives. Even in 100 degree weather, when you lose vo blood volume, you can get hypothermic a lot faster. So, and for every degree that you go down, there's a temper. It increases your chance of death by ten percent. So, hypothermia 
kills. So having that space blanket, putting that on somebody, exactly. Putting that on somebody goes a long way. You want to have temperature control and volume, blood volume control. Those two things save many, many lives. Again, every temperature below your normal temperature that it goes down, that increases your chance of death by 10%. And like I said, even in hot weather, you can become hypothermic. So putting that blanket on somebody, another trick that actually the doctor, doctor taught me, those hand warmers. If somebody's, you know, hypothermic, you put that space blanket on them, put a hand warmer or two under on them, and that keeps them very, very warm for a long period. I would think of like time. putting them underneath their underarms would probably be a really good place, and then put the blanket on top of them. You know what yeah. I mean? So Any place we have the circulation, the at those ax those uh, junctional points, mm -hmm. would be ideal. So, doing just simple things, those space blankets, those are a dollar. A tourniquet is relatively inexpensive. You know. Just the simple things go a really, really long way. I like that chest rig, though. I hadn't seen yeah. that before. But, yeah, on my chest rig, I have that one. Then I have like three or four, because I'm heavy medical, so this one will have medical stuff in it. I have two other ones. So I'll put this on, and I'd have this. And I'm hey, man. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then this goes, actually, I carry three, because this goes on my belt. So I have this on my belt. Right. The other one around my waist and then my chest, my chest rig. So I carry a lot of, I'm heavy medical. I carry a lot of medical, but I, I mean, this can go a long way if it's just me. This has tons of stuff in it. Good pair of scissors, has my tourniquet that I put on it, has pressure bandages, has, you know, ways to control bleeding, has even an old rat tourniquet in there, has some wraps in there. So this little thing has a lot of stuff in here. So you can put a lot in a small space. I'm, okay, so I'm getting ready to turn my camera on so y'all can see me, but this is my new shoot. Um, and that's the reason why I'm asking those questions is because I want to be able to because uh, I want you all to see this. I want to be able to connect my medical bags to this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is already big enough and heavy enough as it is. I'm thinking about that because I know I have a lot of medical training from working in the healthcare mm -hmm. field for 16 years, mm -hmm. but I'm still, you know, going to go back and continue to upgrade myself on more practices. Always, always, Something always. Like for us women as well, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of people, I think they, um, they look to us women to be the medical people. Yeah. And that's I mean, not always the case. Yeah. But even if we don't have the training ourselves, if we at least have the supplies mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. help those, I, you know, like to be able to put, put them on your bags, just anything. I think that red one, I could probably yeah. hook right here. Yeah. You know, the small one. Mm -hmm. Test rig. And the thing is, a lot of these bags, they have Molly on them. So they have spots where you can attach them to mm -hmm. your backpack. Um, like oh, you see, you have like a little rig up on here. I'll usually put my tourniquet. I'll put a tourniquet right here, so immediate access for for me to get to if I need to. I'll have you know, or on my belt somewhere where I can get to it quickly mm -hmm. for somebody else, and then I'll have mine you know, on my, on my back. So find ways, whatever works for you. There's no one answer, but having it and knowing where it is and being able yeah. to use it. So I like your thought. Hey, putting your yeah. gear on and seeing yeah. how it works for you, because a lot of us we don't do that. We don't even. We never take it out of the bag. It's like uh -huh. sitting in the corner. Your, I like that. Your, um, this one. And press. then it has, you got these on the back. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. See those things okay. you can put on your vest without the plates. Yeah. If yeah. you choose not mm -hmm. to, we'll put plates in your vest. And then and you that's can the Molly that attaches to those, to those slots yeah. that go in a lot of different Yeah. My Molly. medic is also, my medic's also another very good company. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. one, if you, yeah. they have this one fixed if you have in your car. Yeah. Um, this one actually actually detaches mm -hmm. if you have it on the back of the seat of the car. Yeah. You can pull it out and it detaches from here. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how this one is. It has a piece that goes on my belt actually. Right. So I can right. Put it on my you belt. Just with pull it off. Yeah. Yeah. And loop it on there. If you oh, have something like that big, you don't want to put it too high here because it's your line of vision is not obstructed. Okay. It's also something yeah. that's to grab one to pull you back and forth. So if you could put it like in front of you and distribute the weight from your backpack to the front, it makes it a little bit easier to carry. Yeah. Or even on your belt. 
Yeah, I like put a lot of stuff on my belt. Not a lot, but I try to just like Carbon says, distribute that weight so that your doesn't affect your balance and you know just wear you out. Um, so just find and finding out what I do, and I think uh, Ben Shooting got me onto that. He would always would say, you know, get on the treadmill, put your yeah. gear on, and get on the treadmill and walk. Mm. <laughs> See how. Because you'll find hot spots, you'll find stuff that oh, that's rubbing up against my ribs. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. so you'll adjust mm -hmm. it or get the so you're right. used to moving with it on. So mm -hmm. even that bag already yeah. has, it's not even full, right? Yeah. You know, I don't even have the tent on there. Like I ordered a tent off of Amazon for about seventy bucks. It's less than seven pounds. Nice. Um, it has to open on both sides. It's got the rain cover. You know what I'm saying? It's quick mm -hmm. and easy to put up, like less than five minutes to set up. So, you know, you want to consider those things too. But I don't want to get too off track mm -hmm. I'm talking about that more just going on the medical cells. Mm -hmm. I thank y'all. Yeah. yeah. For being Appreciate here. you guys. Thank you for having me on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Appreciate Let what you guys are doing. The more people that are talking about this, the better because it's, mm -hmm. it's very, very much needed because we already know in a lot of our communities, Medical care is we're underserved. I'm thinking even in San Antonio, the east side is where the majority of people are, that look like us stay. Major health facilities are at least 15, 20 minutes away. Yeah. So imagine somebody bleeding seriously for 15 and 20 minutes. You haven't yeah. done anything. By the time they get to the health care or by the time somebody gets to them. Right. It's right. already you you're lucky if they get back there. To the facility. Yeah. Exactly. Travel time there. But if you can get a tourniquet on them or direct pressure mm -hmm. on them, you're keeping those red blood cells in their body so they have a better chance. You're keeping them warm so they don't get hypothermic. Mm -hmm. They have a better chance of survival long term. So we need and to we be our really own really caregivers. Take the Stop the Bleed class that mm -hmm. Black Point Dexter is telling y'all about. Yeah. Get on cert, sign up for these first aid classes and these CPR mm -hmm. classes. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. just stop there. If you want to go and be an instructor. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, consider that as well because we need more of that in our community. Exactly. Mm -hmm. you know, exactly. Don't just go take the class unless you, mm -hmm. that's all fine. That's, mm -hmm. But, you know, make sure you take the kids with you, take your parents with you. They're not too old to learn this stuff, too. Right. And that way, you have to practice on each other. And then that way, you're making it an everyday thing. You'll be ready instead of, mm -hmm. you know, being prepared, unprepared. I like that. I like that. Mm -hmm. Thank everybody for joining the chat. Thank you. Thanks. Else want to thank Thanks. you all. Thank you, everybody, for coming out for Thrive Thursday Live. We um, share this information so that in case of any kind of emergency, we will thrive through yes. it. So yeah. We appreciate everybody. Thank you. We'll be Thank back you. next week, Thursday, for another live with a different subject. We hope to see you next week, Thursday, again. Thank you, Ghetto. Please. Thank you, everybody. Y'all yeah. yeah, take care. Stay safe, fam. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Take care. Stay ready, y'all. Stay ready. Oh wait, did you mention farm farmers' um preparedness? Oh, plus? thank you for that. Oh yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, I wish I could do that. Lead farmer is having a uh, uh, camping meetup for anybody that is interested. It I'm is September nineteenth through the twenty first. It will be in Myrtle Beach. I have the links that I wanted to put here in the chat. Just a moment. You have it? Lady Led, yes. Okay, no problem. I got the links from Lady Led, y'all. Hold on. Okay, no. this first link that Thank I'm you. going to share with you all mm -hmm. is the link to the actual campsite. Mm -hmm. You will need to register. Yeah, Led, thank you. Thank you. This is the um, link to register. Okay. Campsite registration. And also, when we leave here, Vision Preparedness is live right now, and he has a good topic that's that. going on. So if we, if it's not too late for y'all, we could jump over there. And if you want to, one of you ladies can put his link in the stream. Thank you. Thank you. Vision and Preparedness. Then this next, thank you, Daddy. No apologies. And then this next link is to register with lead and lady lead so that they know where you are in the campground they can keep up with you um i'm gonna be sponsoring a camping spot for the uh, for the three days for someone who wants to go and they can't really afford to go i'm sponsoring a family for the camping trip um 
I know that there was, who else was it led? If you're still in here, please share with another person who's going to be, um, there might be several people sponsoring the campers who would like to go. So if you want to make it, please go. Um, they're going to be teaching you how to use barrel rods. It's, it's going to be all about how to prepare and how to survive out in the world if you didn't have any um, electricity, okay? So just go enjoy the group. Um, I'm sorry, register with the lid. And enjoy fellowshipping and learning survival skills at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. Yep. Show us closer. Okay, so you definitely need to register at the campsite. If you're going to be someone who needs to get sponsored, please reach out to Led and Lady Led on the link where it says register with the Led, okay? And they will let you know how many spots they have available for the people who need to be sponsored. Thank you, my Renaissance grandma. It was Container Crop. Yes. Mm -hmm. Container Crop is also going to be sponsoring. Okay. Oh, thanks, Led. You know, we, we all so love each other. We all share this information. So mm -hmm. please, by all means, if you want to link up with them for that. I'm going to try to be there. Study that has all of the knowledge. Okay. Sorry about that. So just hit them up if y'all are interested. And thank you, Carmen, for reminding me about this. You're welcome. No problem. That point, Dexter. Thank you so much for coming. You're quite on. welcome. You're quite welcome. Thank Especially you. with that knowledge that yeah. you got from being in the Air Force and being in medical training in the Air Force, like you're priceless to us. So we appreciate you. Yeah, I love my community. I love y'all. So yeah, I got to share it. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Tori. Okay. Everybody I, um, take care and go over to the next live. Everybody I put the, the um, yeah, I put the, the link I dropped is the next slide we're going to go over to. Thank okay. y'all for coming out. See you next Thursday. We appreciate like you. Ashe. Ashe. Bye, everybody.